Welcome back, everybody. This is Adobe Live. My name is Tim Wilbest, and today I'm joined by my new best friend, Max Mischowski. Hi, Max. How are you today? Strong intro. <sighs> Hi, Tim. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for having me, of course. Oh, man. It's Very a pleasure exciting. having you. Fantastic. Before we go back to you, I would just like to say a couple of things, because first of all, if you're watching the stream and you're not watching this on Behance, make sure to come over to be.net slash Life. I will put the link right below us. Hang on. Whoop. There we go. Be.net slash Life. Join us there and I will put on some music, actually. It's awfully quiet. Hang on. Ah. There we go. All right. Join us there. Say hi in the chat and you can join the wonderful community, which always is chatting. Yes, there we go. Sanjana, uh, Sandrine, yes, good morning, Sean. And uh, <laughs> they're, they're almost, always chatting. Gareth, yes, there we go. And thank you so much for joining us today. What they are talking about? Is he in his own ear? What? I, is it sometimes what? am ah. I in my own ear? What? Um. Yes, yes, I am. <laughs> Sometimes when you try to understand the conversation and it's just happening and you're just jumping in, you don't know what's happened. So I have no idea what you're talking about. Anyway, today we are joined by the wonderful Max Mischowski. And I understand that you would like to talk about a bit about your photography today and that we will jump into Lightroom later on. Is that yeah. right? Yes. That is, yeah, yeah, cool. So um, basically just what I wanted, what I thought would be useful was just to go through uh, a few different projects that I've worked on over the past few years. Mm -hmm. and talk a little bit about my approach to that and like why I've been interested in that and kind of what has kind of been pushing me forward through, I guess, a little bit of a train of thought between, between different ideas and different concepts. And then um, later on, I thought it would be interesting to you know, go, go, into, go into Lightroom and just look at how I'm kind of using that, um, mostly in terms of editing and sequencing and how I'm kind of like using it just to like to look at my work and continually review it and to find um, relationships between images and essentially like, you know, tr try and use it as a way to, to think about photography as, as projects and sets and hopefully look at um, how it might be useful in relation to maybe planning an exhibition or planning a book project or even just thinking about like how to, how to post stuff onto, onto Instagram. I thought would be yeah hopefully quite that useful. Like but great slight disclaimer is that you know I'm not some technical whiz kid. What? At all. Okay, cancel the stream. No, stop it, everybody. This uh, okay. No. <laughs> but, I mean, um, that's why I'm here. I thought it would just be nice to um, yeah talk a little bit in relation to the to the software in, in terms of like how I've just you know I've obviously spent a lot of time on it and it's just in terms of like how I think how I've got a little bit of the system and how I make it work for me. Um, which, yeah, maybe yes, that's just... Every workflow is different. Even yeah, though yeah. we're perhaps not the most, like, keyboard shortcuts, pro tips, pow, pow, pow. Mm -hmm. Even then, I think everybody can still learn a thing or two from you. And that's what yeah, we're here yeah. today. So, once again, thank you so much for joining us in the chat, everybody. If you have any questions, just make sure to pop them right into the Behance chat. And I will make sure to interrupt Max at the worst time when he's telling a great story. I will just say, ah, one second, question. And then hopefully he can answer them. Right, I think, am I saying you guys are nuts making this real? Yes. And oh, now I get it. Because usually I'm the one producing the stream. That's why I am in somebody's ear. Now I am in my own ear. So yes, I can talk to myself. It's fantastic. Right, <laughs> okay. Um, yes, I think the chat is excited. So let's jump over to you and take a look at your work. Pow. Right. Cool. So, hello everyone, by the way, I can't see the chat or, or who's in here, but I'd just like to say hello, obviously, thanks for joining. Something that I did do is I kind of put something out on Instagram yesterday and just asked for any questions or uh, things that people would be interested in me covering. So I'm going to try and cover it in this first section where I talk about uh, some of my work and some of my projects. And I'm just going to cycle through a set of images that kind of like seamlessly go into one another. But I'll just talk about the point at which it changes into a new project. And the first set of images that I want to talk about was when I first moved to London in 2017. And um, essentially uh, started becoming very interested in making uh, street 
portraits. And um, this was um, a really great way for me to, uh, to explore the city that I just moved to and just to try and uh, meet a lot of people that were basically living within my immediate community. So I, I moved to South East London when I, first, when I first came here. I kind of just took it upon myself. Obviously, I wanted to get better at portraiture. I was really passionate about meeting people and quite sociable and I kind of I really enjoy that interaction. I thought, well, a great way to hopefully like get a bit of a portfolio together as well as to practice, as well as to meet people, uh, and as, as well as just to have an opportunity to explore London was to just do a lot of street portraits. Um, so these are some of those street portraits uh, now. And it was, uh, it was a really fun process for me. And um, it really gave me an opportunity to start to hone a little bit of a sense of of style as well as um, honing a little bit of a, an approach to um, how I'm thinking about projects but how I'm thinking about um, also just making images of people, how I'm thinking about light, how I'm thinking about the technical approach and um, so just one second just, so uh, like um, I know this might sound obvious for you and some of the people in the audience but um, these are all like candid Uh, street photos, no preparations, no lighting setup, or no, no lighting setup. So all of the projects that I'll show you uh, today, uh, that they're, they're all shot on analog film, or on wow. analog me medium format film. And um, I think you have to talk about that in a moment, then, because all, I don't all, think with, uh, all, all with natural light. Oh. Um, and, and it really is relying entirely on on chance encounters. So it was just a case of each day, um, you know, packing my bag with my camera gear and, you know, some boxes of film, setting a little bit of a walk for myself, like specifically within South East London. So I set that as like, as, as the parameter with, with, within which to make the portraits. And then would uh, just walk around and, you know, if I felt like there might be an opportunity to make a portrait of someone, Or maybe someone had a nice light on them, or maybe I just got chatting to them kind of incidentally. Uh, then that would be, you know, after through that process, then I would, you know, ask them if I could make a portrait of them. And then I would always send them a picture and, and try and maintain some sort of, um, maintain some sort of contact with them um, after the fact. And this was something that, um, yeah, it got, it got brought up like, It, it's a classic thing all the time, but when I kind of asked for a few questions uh, on Instagram, it was like digital or analog, you know? And it seems to be this kind of, um, yeah, recurring thing. And I understand why people are kind of interested in it. And just um, like on, on that point, it's like I do shoot a lot of digital and I really enjoy shooting digital. But for me, there was a, there's a process um, involved and a, a kind of slowness um, with shooting film that really lent itself to making these portraits and to meeting those people. And there was also a certain aesthetic to using the camera I was using and using that film um, that created a certain atmosphere um, that you know I was looking for. A lot of people that I was inspired by were kind of shooting on analog film and they were making portraits. So. That was something that I was kind of, I suppose, keen to keen to emulate and keen to experiment with. So the um, people in the chat are just asking, first of all, you, because of your name, where are you from? It sounds northern, they say. Um, so my second name is, is Polish. So my granddad uh, was was from Poland, yeah. uh, but my dad my dad was born here, um, and yeah, so I've inherited the name. Uh, about that. And also, they are really surprised to say, see that uh, you're shooting this on analog film, and they are wondering how Lightroom plays into that workflow. I guess yeah. you would rather use a dark room for that. Uh, do you develop your own photos? So I actually um, I use a lab in in London to develop my photos and to scan yeah. the images as well, and that's. Um, Is, is really important and uh, just a big shout out to, if anyone's in London to Labyrinth Photographic 
they're in Beth, uh, Bethnal Green and they scan and develop all of my film and they just they do an amazing job and they turn it around really quick and those guys are yeah they've kind of been amazing um so that's essentially how it's working you know is I'm, I'm shooting on film but I'm working with scans of those uh, scans of the negatives which obviously create a digital file and then I'm using Lightroom as a way to to organize and to to keep on top of those those files and some of those files, you know, they, they come straight uh, straight from the lab, the scan just, you know, sometimes just straight off the bat, it looks great. And other times it kind of requires a little bit of tweaking and a little bit of color correction for me to, I suppose, put a little bit of a flavor on something um, that starts to kind of edge towards a little bit of a pers personal touch. Um, but also like maybe I see when I took the image, I saw it as being a little more saturated or a little more contrasty. And when those scans come back, maybe they're not quite how I remember them. So then I would use Lightroom to, uh, to, to adapt and to work with those images to try and get a little bit of a, uh, a closer recreation of, 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 of what I remember it looking like in my head. I mean, those, those scans, they must be huge. I'm sure the resolution like on photographic film must be amazing. Or are they yeah, I mean, it can be it can be huge. I mean basically how it works is I'm getting a lot of low res scans back. Hmm. Kind of like low to medium uh, res scans that come back and they actually have a lot of information and you can really play with those images. But then if it comes to doing an exhibition or working on any prints or, or anything like that, or if I maybe if I want to submit a portrait to a competition. Um, to a prize that I really want it to be as good as possible, then I would look at getting a high-res scan done. And then I would you know, retouch that scan to, to try and emulate where I had got to with the, with the original low-res reference. Um, so that's kind of, that's the process that I'm, I'm sort of working with when I am working with, uh, when I'm working with film. So I'm not printing in the dark room. Um, that that's a really beautiful process and it creates great images. Um, but for me, it's it's quite a slow process, and there's also a lot to learn in terms of uh, digital retouching and, and, and working with scans as well. So I've kind of focused my attention, at least for the time being, on on that. Okay, so that was a selection of uh, of street portraits um, that really got me kind of started off when I first moved to London. And really was a great opportunity to, to practice and experiment, approaching people, working with light, how I then kind of like work with the colors in post in Lightroom to try and get a, to get a little bit of a sense of style and to get a little bit of a, uh, to put my own touch on things. Um, but how I'm kind of very much thinking about photography is in, is in projects. And um, although I really like those, the portraits that I just showed you, um, you know, they didn't feel particularly cohesive um, as a project. It was just like a, a set of portraits, you know, which they work great. You can put them on Instagram or whatever. Um, but it just didn't feel very focused as, as a story. But it was through that process that um, I um, started spending more time at my local park, uh, which was called Burgess Park in, in, in South East London, which was like a short walk from my house. Um, and it was during 2018, so the, it was this really beautiful summer, like there was just this never-ending heat wave. Uh, and obviously a lot of people hanging out at the park, <clears throat> dancing together, having food together. You know, there's this amazing barbecue area that's like a concrete built in barbecue area. And people would bring sound systems down and, you know, picnics and, and, and the whole bit, you know, and just have this like fantastic there. time. I mean, come yeah, it on. Was, it was lovely, you know, and I thought, oh, this, this is a much more focused idea. So rather than look at Southeast London and random portraits, maybe I could do a set of images just in the park that try and, um, try and, try and capture a little bit of that sense of, of, of the summer. And I suppose a sense of, uh, a sense of community of the local area in London using this, this public space to, uh, to come together and, and, you know, spend time with each other and, and just to enjoy themselves. So it's, it's quite a simple idea. Um, but this is a selection of those images that I can start to cycle through now to give a little bit of a sense of of, um, of that work and, and that project. Yeah, I mean, that's really, really important just to recognize that they are great uh, 
shots like really around you, perhaps even down the street, just next door, your neighbors. Yeah. I know you did a project around that. Were you talking about that? I, yeah, yeah, I did. And I was Okay. So sometimes I sometimes I would show show that work as just a little bit of a as an intro to what really got me uh, passionate about photography initially. Um, but just in the interest of time, yeah. um, right? I, I skipped over it, but just to just to kind of um, just to explain, it was essentially on the street that I was living in Leeds, um, in in the north of England, just before I moved down uh, to London. As as part of the, I did the first year of a degree, photography degree, um, before um, before dropping out because I, I wanted to move to London, and we had to basically create a book project. Uh, at the end of that first year and I decided to get to know as many people that lived on my street as possible, knocked on the doors, introduced myself as, as you know, living at number 65 and, and as a photography student and asked if I could basically, if they'd be interested in uh, taking part in the project. And I basically just did portraits of a lot of, uh, a lot of my different neighbors. And it, it was that again, really um, Uh, was a great opportunity for me to practice and to start to get a little bit of a sense of, of what it is that I enjoy about photography. And, uh, you know, that comes across also in this work that it is, you know, it's trying to, you know, um, explore your local area and engage with your local community and just to just to sort of meet people and uh, and, and to, to use photography as, as a vehicle uh, to do that. Absolutely. And if you'd like to know more about that project, Cemetery Road, I believe it was called, you can check out the YouTube link in the chat. I will just post that to you. Max did an entire talk on that. Really great uh, talk. I would encourage you to watch it after the stream. Amazing. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, very, you know, it's very much about kind of um, working locally. <clears throat> And, you know, I'm still doing that, although I am working on projects a little further afield as well. But I'm still very much... I'm interested in making work about kind of my local community. So, um, so like I said, you know, these are a selection of those images, and it was always about trying to capture that dreaminess. And uh, like I said, it was this amazing summer, amazing light, people hanging out all the time, and um, yeah, it was just it was just a good time, you know. And I kind of was very um, uh, conscious of. Um, random picture of uh, some <laughs> uh, just I did more movies, um, but obviously the work is generally focused around portraits but yeah it was just very much about trying to capture that atmosphere do you know what I mean and for them to for them to feel good and for them to feel quite light-hearted and dreamy and uh, for me that was something also that was like reflective in you know in the in the choice of using analog and working with film it's, it does mm. have this dreamy quality so It's not just a case of like shooting film for the sake of it, you know, for this particular project. It's a case of you shooting on film because it creates this dreamy aesthetic that marries up with what it was I was trying to say um, with, within the work. And I think that that's really important as well. Um, and talking about the people you take photos of, do you get uh, releases from them so you can use it? Or how does that work? Some people um, in the chat. Basically, I'll always uh, I'll always keep in touch with the people, right? And uh, you know, send them a picture, and you know, I'll grab their phone number and their contact details. You know, mainly so I can send them the picture. Mm. But if it comes to, I mean, the only situation where it's ever like you know needing uh, kind of release forms is um, often for kind of entering entering photography prizes or, or, or awards. And, um, you know, if that's the case, um, then I would just call them up and I would explain what's going on and, you know, obviously ask for their permission hmm. about how, how I, you know, intend on using the image or, or submitting the image to this prize or to this award. And if they say no, then, you know, obviously I don't do it. Yeah. So, so, so for me, it's like you could get it on the street, but it's like it completely ruins the atmosphere. Because it, it's, you know, you have to create a, a, a sense of, you know, you have to be approachable and it has to be a, a mutual exchange. Do you know what I mean? It's not a case of like necessarily me just like taking this image from you and me entering it into a prize. It's a case of being like, I'm working on this project about the park. You know, it would, I think that you, you would be able to contribute to that project and, and you know, I could make 
a great portrait of you that would work. And then it's a case of, you know, if I think it's going to be suitable for any of those things, getting in touch with them then. Do you know what I mean? If you, if you, if you just get it on the, um, yeah, if you get it there in front of them, you know, you build up this rapport with someone and then you're like, oh, can you just sign this form so that I can use your image however, you, mm. however I want without ever asking you? It kind of like is not cool, you know. It's obviously like not a good way to approach it uh, for a lot of different reasons. So um, it just makes sense for me to just get someone's contact details. You can send through the image. And then if it ever comes up where maybe you do need someone to sign something, then you can just get in touch and explain what it is and, and you know, hopefully they say yes. But if not, then that's obviously something yeah. that you've got to perfect. So. And do people approach you differently because you're using like a quote unquote old camera, uh, an analog camera, or are they more relaxed? Is there any difference? I mean, you should dig uh, digital also. So do you feel? I think it makes a, I think it makes a really big difference. And definitely, uh, this was something that came up quite a lot when I, when I put the questions out to, uh, you know, ask for some questions from Instagram is really like how, how to approach people, especially working with, with uh, kind of street portraits and There's, there's, you know, that it's a big question, you know, it's something that you really have to practice at and get used to people rejecting you. But definitely using, um, using this big old camera and having, you know, it is, is a point of interest mm. immediately, you know. So they, the, obviously the people get a sense that you know what you're doing or that you are a passionate photographer. And there's, you know, the idea of working with film and, It's a slower process. There's a, a little bit of a less, um, yeah, it just doesn't feel quite as creepy somehow. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, just and, with and, the smartphone, like, can I take a photo, please? Yeah, you know, exactly. And it's interesting because, like, smartphones are obviously getting, um, you know, you can take great pictures on a smartphone now, you know, especially, like, the oh, yeah. ones that are that. Like, they're amazing. They're, like, high resolution and the lenses are pretty good. And, you know, you definitely can do that. But... Go, going up to someone in, in, in a park, say, and being like, oh, I'd really like to take a, a, a photo of you and pulling out your mm -hmm. iPhone. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's going to change the dynamic of that situation in a big way. So it's not necessarily just about uh, the, the quality of that iPhone picture. You know, it's, it, it's, it's about intention, do you know what I mean? And it's about yeah. taking something seriously. And that really, like, you know, with this portrait here or you know, a lot of the other portraits, they're quite delicate and they're, they're, they're quite soft and they have a, uh, a very specific atmosphere to them that like, I have to create that atmosphere when I, when I approach these people. And it's about being calm and it's about being slow and being approachable. And there's something about that camera that, that helps to create that atmosphere. Whereas however calm or approachable I, I am, if that situation has an iPhone in the middle of it, It's going to be very difficult to get to get quite the same atmosphere. You can get great pictures, of course, but just this specific type of soft, delicate atmosphere, I think, can you know, can be more difficult when certainly when doing street portraits, you know. Um, And so yeah, I've, has, hopefully that answers the question a little bit. Has that way of approaching people uh, uh, has it changed since you were a student? <clears throat> Now that you're more professional. Um, Carlos is asking that in the chat. They, they are also saying, hi, I love your work. <laughs> okay, thank you very much and hello. Uh, yeah, and thanks for these questions as well. It's really, it's really great. Um, so has my approach changed since kind of becoming professional? Um, I don't think so. You know, I think mm. it's just, um, it's just the same, you know, it's just, it's just going up to people and, and hopefully being friendly and, and, and being, being approachable. And also, like, just being honest, you know, and, and just ha having, having, like, a, a decent intention for the work and, like, explaining, it's trying to convince someone, you know, in a very short space of time, you have about five to 15 seconds to convince someone that you're not a total weirdo <laughs> and, nice. and that, your that your intentions are good and that there is a clear idea uh, behind what it is you're doing. And making these images in the park Uh, lent itself very easily to that because if people are dancing and having a good time and eating food together and I, I approach someone, I say, oh, hi, like, this is kind of random, 
But, um, you know, I'm working on a project about the park that celebrates the park, that celebrates the people of the park and the light and everyone dancing. And they can look around and they can see that. Then instantly it, it makes sense to them as well. And they can see how they fit into that environment and how that project is like, um, yeah, like it's logical, you know? So they can just immediately see that and be like, okay, cool. Like that makes sense. You're doing a project about the park. I'm happy for you to take a portrait of me. Hmm. Whereas in the earlier street portraits um, that I showed, it's a little more difficult because you're just going to someone at a bus stop or there was an example of someone just eating chicken, you know, in, in, in a chicken shop. And it's, and it's a lot more difficult to just go up to them and to, and to explain why you want to take a portrait of them eating chicken. Hmm. You know, like that, that's more of a challenge. Right. So the more context you have and the more context you can give your subject, the, the more likely they are to say yes, because they understand the, the idea and the intention of the work, you know? And um, one more question from Gareth. Are these framed as shot or are they cropped in post? Um, most of them are pretty accurate to, to the, 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 the full frame. Um, but I'm certainly not against cropping, you know, at all. Like if there's, um, yeah, if I think an image is going to work better if I pull it in a little bit, um, then I'll definitely, I'll definitely do that, you know. Um, but most of the time, they are quite accurate and they are, they are working at the full crops. And that's, uh, you know, because I'm kind of working with a slow, slow camera, I'm working on film, you know, it costs money for each photo. So you're really taking your time to get that frame right, you know, and to really think about it. Um, so that saves a little bit of time, <laughs> you know, cropping time. Right. Uh, so, yeah. Um, honestly, I'm just surprised that they are still selling films and developing for the um, films for you. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. it's really, it's really Probably. popular, you know? especially like yes. within the fact that industry, I know, you know, a lot of people are shooting film and, Oh, yeah, really? it's really Amazing. Yeah, it's, it seems to be, um, it's quite a big thing. And I think that it's interesting now, I feel like people are starting to, a lot of that community and those people who are quite dedicated to film are starting to switch over a little bit to digital. As that technology gets better, as medium format cameras become a little more um, affordable. Um, so yeah, it's, it's sort of interesting. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of labs in London and a lot of people uh, that I know that are, still still shooting on film so so that's that was kind of the end of that the burgess park work so i don't know if there's like a last couple of questions about that or anything and then i can go on to uh the latest uh body of work that i that not I about this on. project just in general like so you have to consider your framing in camera and i would say yes of course mm -hmm. so no um i think we are good so far okay okay cool so After making that work in London and working within more of kind of an immediate, uh, kind of my immediate community, I suppose, the people that are kind of directly around me, I, re I really wanted to uh, get out of London and to make work outside of London because I've been doing it for a couple of years. And I grew up in, in Lincoln, which is a relatively short drive from the, um, from, from the coast, obviously the, the, the Lincolnshire coastline in the Midlands. Mm -hmm. And I was really interested in, in, in going and exploring the, the east coast of England, which is, as a kid, I went on, on holiday there a lot and kind of had a lot of memories there as a kid. So I was kind of interested to uh, go and document these places, revisit these towns and to, to meet people in the process. And a lot of these towns are kind of often depicted and seen as quite tacky and, and uh, sort of cheap looking. Um, but I was really interested in trying to paint a slightly different, um, you know, paint those towns in a slightly different light and to take that aesthetic that I'd used previously, this kind of dreamy and more romantic aesthetic and bring it to the, bring it to the British East Coast that is, like I said, often depicted in the exact opposite way to that. So, uh, these are some of the images, uh, that I took, I took two, two long trips, um, essentially just like a road trip, sleeping in my car, um, just so that I can like catch the sunset and catch the sunrise and get up super early. And um, yeah, I spent kind of, um, yeah, I spent these two trips traveling, traveling up and down the British East Coast, uh, revisiting a lot of these places that um, 
I remember as a kid. Uh, so that was kind of the idea for this work. I mean, this photo, just the one you showed, uh, when I saw that on your, um, your work, I was like, huh? And then, oh, yes, in the center. I mean, that framing is on point. And I was like, just thinking, is that a gradient? What is happening? But yeah, yeah. Such, such a clean sky. I don't think you would you would ever find yeah, that. Yeah, it was just before. over, I took this over Scarborough. Um, so there's this, yeah, town in, in the north. And yeah, it was just this kind of amazing little moon and this kind of beautiful sunset gradient across the sky. And <laughs> obviously kind of made a very like simple and quite a graphic image, which uh, yeah, for me it's kind of, it's kind of stayed as one of my favorite in the project, which has been interesting because it's quite simple. Oh yeah. But this project was called um, A Big Fat Sky. And for me, it was really nice to come out of London and to go to these more open landscapes Uh, with the sea and, you know, obviously with the, with the sky and um, much more kind of, yeah, much more open. And that was, uh, that was really fun to kind of explore that. And um, yeah, I, it was, uh, it was a really great experience uh, working on this project. It was a lot of fun. And it's actually led me to, uh, to a body of work that I'm working on now. Um, which is going to take quite a long time, I think, to finish, uh, just because of the nature of it. Um, but yeah, it was it was a really kind of great journey of discovery and an opportunity to kind of like explore the British landscape, um, and really just to yeah to to portray it in kind of a romantic light, you know. I mean, yes. Yeah, sp speaking of the light. Sandrine is asking, it looks like Max loves tangent lighting, as in very lateral lighting. Um, do you, I know you don't use like artificial lights, but do you direct like sort of people like, could you move a bit that way so the uh, natural light looks better on you? Do you do anything? Yeah, sometimes. I mean, often I'm kind of like looking for people or subjects that are already lit very well. And when I'm walking around, you know, that is one thing that I'm really looking for. If something is in a, a great light or it's lit very well, then obviously I'm going to be, I'm going to be drawn to that. It's quite unusual that I would ask to take a portrait of someone and then move them out of the situation that they're yeah. in. <laughs> yeah, yes. so, I mean, and, and that's like, I, you know, I can understand like why people would do that. Um, you know, to, to, they might find a perfect subject and then they obviously want to, yeah, like get it in in better light but for me it's about like finding that person who's already in that light and for those two things to to meet at that at that right point so although i am engaging with the subject and i might ask them to look this way or look that way i am um uh i am relying a little bit on on the, the a chance discovery of of subject and light kind of coming together perfectly um, i mean I'm more used, like, personally, I do a lot of photo retouching, so I can basically move the light wherever I want to. Um, yeah. So do you ever feel like you're limited in this sort of, I don't know, reality asylum? <laughs> Or, yeah, I, well, I mean, I guess, like, uh, to an extent, but for me, like, that, you know, it's, it's, it's very much a journey of, of, like, discovery and, like, going out into the world and finding these these things as they exist naturally, you know? Right. And in that sense, like obviously that kind of places my, my work and my approach like very much into a, um, into a, a, a documentary genre, you know? It, it's it's the, the world sort of as it is, um, but with, you know, with my particular eye and my particular aesthetic. And it's very much about just exploring and, 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 and trying to find these things, you know, and for me, that's the excitement, you know, of, of photography is, is, is packing your bag with your camera, setting a journey or setting a specific walking route around your local area for the day and just really just see what happens. Um, and you know, it's, it's really exciting, uh, what, what you find. And sometimes it's really frustrating that you sometimes you go out and spend a whole day or like I've gone on some of these trips before. It's like, I might spend two days not really finding anything that is working in the way that I want it to. But in contrast, I might go out and, and spend a week shooting 
and 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 every day find something you know really hit like a streak with it and be like wow this is really great this is great yeah. the light hit is amazing i found this person to do this great you know this great portrait of or whatever and it's that sort of like it's that excitement of like watching it unfold in front of you uh, that keeps kind of bringing me back to it and keeps making me want to go out and, and to to try and to try and find these these subjects and these images you know it's it's that challenge uh, I suppose of, of, of not really having control uh, and just moving through the landscape and trying to find specific moments or juxtapositions or mm. interesting light and that's um, yeah, coming back off one of those trips and then, you know, where it's been productive and you're like, wow, you know, I've found all these little moments and all these, all this beautiful light. And and I noticed just um, a second ago in that image, uh, that person was, I think they're smiling a bit into the camera. Do you specifically ask them, like, could you smile or do, do they smile? Do they smile a lot? Do you ask them, please don't? Or um, I, d I just kind of say to, um, I just say to relax and you don't have to, mm. You don't have right. to <clears throat> pose in any way. You know, I might just say, oh, you can look straight into the lens or look off to the right or, you know, hmm. whatever it might be. But in terms of being like, oh, don't smile. I will, you know, obviously, like if someone is smiling, they're, they're presenting themselves to the camera in, in, in a very right. specific way, uh, which is fine. Do you know what I mean? And, and sometimes, obviously, I'll take those pictures. Um, but more often than not, it's, I'm just like, okay, so you can just relax and look straight into the lens and there's no need to pose or to pull any particular face. Like with this guy, he's obviously kind of wincing a little bit because of the harsh light, <clears throat> um, which, which is kind of, I guess, what created that expression in this, in this one particular instant. Um, so yeah, it's kind of an interesting one, but with I this, like it was just to There's a question. Lot of <laughs> yeah. I'm really sorry, just talking on top of each other all the time because we have no, a no, 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 slight no. delay. Um, I just saw that one that uh, you have some black and white images. Is there some sort of rule? Do you decide that beforehand? Do you really shoot on black and white film? Is that a, a Lightroom decision? And I guess we also have to jump into Lightroom at some point. We only have 20 mm -hmm. minutes left. Okay, okay. Um, so, I'll, I'll keep I'll keep going through these okay, just yeah. to get to the end okay, of them. But then, yeah, but in terms of the black and white images, um, I, I shoot all on color film. And then, if I think that it might work in black and white, then I'm happy to do that um, and and to and to take the color out of it. For me, it's just a bit too risky shooting on black and white film. Hmm. Um, although I really like um, I really like black and white images. Obviously, the majority of my images are are in color, you know, and I don't like the idea of shooting it in black and white and then being like, oh, could have been really amazing to have it in color. <laughs> oh no, yes. So I'm definitely yeah. thinking in color, you know, when I'm making these projects and then okay. sometimes in the editing process, I might find an image that isn't quite working in color or there's something not quite right. And I might uh, try and change it to black and white to, to get uh, closer to a sort of a certain atmosphere that I might be, might be looking for, so. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that's sort of the end of that project um, there. So they're kind of like the three, the three uh, sets of images that I wanted to wanted to show. And then um, yeah, just to go into Lightroom and to talk uh, a little bit about that. Um, and hopefully this is kind of this is sort of helpful to people. Um, but we'll see, you know. Like I said, I'm not some technical wizard or anything, um, but hopefully it's just sort of useful in terms of how I'm thinking about bodies of work and how I'm thinking about projects. And um, first, just in terms of like how I have, you know, my Lightroom set up is I have everything all in the same catalog. <laughs> and this is something that I've recently changed to because for a long time I was using separate catalogs for each project. And then I realized that it was too difficult to compare images from different projects. It just didn't make sense. Uh, whereas now I just have all my hard drives set up so that I can access any project at any time. And I can pull different images from different projects into collections. And the thing that I like about collections is 
like I said, it's not just from one project. It can be a mixture of different projects. So if I want to work on a portfolio or if I want to do an edit for my website or anything like that, then I can, I can break that down and have a, a mixture of, have access to all of my work over the past, you know, five years mm. or whatever and, and combine them together and find kind of interesting pairs. Uh, so something that I wanted to do was I just dragged like a load of images into this, uh, I've got a section here called books uh, because I'm working on a new book project at the minute. Exciting. And, yeah, it's exciting. And I just, uh, um, it's a really interesting way to edit and to work with, uh, with images. So just to give a little bit of a sense of it. And it's a really nice way to just organize your images and to think about an end, you know, an, an end goal and an end project. Uh, which for me at the minute is is this book. So what I've done here is I've just dragged a load of images into this one collection. And I just kind of want to show a few things that I would go through in terms of interacting with these images and playing with these images. Some of the questions that I got like from Instagram was a really big one was like, um, <clears throat> um, colors, you know, uh, working with skin tones, getting, getting, wor getting warm colors to your, to your images and specific kind of color grading questions, which is, which is a really important question. And it's, it's kind of a big one. I think when, when starting off, um, about how to achieve a certain, uh, certain aesthetic in terms of, in terms of color and for me, like how, how I approach that um, is really through um, editing my images. And by editing, I mean uh, just looking at different images and taking different images out of projects and seeing what pairs like diptychs or triptychs or sets of images work well together. And then see if there's like an odd one out in terms of color, you know, or see... Oh. Or, 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 or see, and then if that if there's an odd one out, see if I can alter that to then fit with another image. So that means you don't necessarily have a plan on which color scheme, color look you like to achieve. No. Before you actually pick those images out. No, I, I mean oh, okay. an, an important thing I guess to say would be that you know with photography as opposed to kind of illustration or whatever. So, you know, so, such a big part of like finding these colors and finding a certain aesthetic is what you're finding in the world. You know, if you're working with documentary, it's like, well, what colors are you attracted to photograph? What type of light are you using when you go out? And obviously those things are going to influence the colors in the images uh, in a huge way. And then you can just kind of push them and, and, and pull them around a little bit in Lightroom just to kind of fine tune them. But um, you know, a big part of the color in the photograph is is in what you choose to frame and what you choose to take the picture of. Um, but just as like a little example, I just wanted to go through a few things. I've just grabbed a load of different images here from different projects, and just wanted to start to look at um, a couple couple of pairings and or anything like that. So obviously, you know, needless to say, if we double click on an image. It's bringing up the single image, right? right. So this is a, this is from a project that I did um, in East London. It was actually part of a commission. Um, but what's fun for me is rather than looking at single images in this way, is thinking about them in in sets or thinking about them in pairs. So I might want to grab another image. You know, if I press Command and click, very rudimentary stuff. Mm -hmm. And if I press C to compare these images, it can bring two images up. <clears throat> Now this seems like I said, really basic, but this is something that I'm doing all the time in order to train my eye and in order to <clears throat> start to better get to know my, my archive and my approach to photography and my approach to colors. <clears throat> so these two images, they work well together. There's a, there's a certain aesthetic that's happening and they work quite well as a pair. And this is kind of an important process for me to go through in terms of trying to create a story or to try and create some sort of narrative. So the portrait by itself, sure, it's nice, you know, and it works and the colors are cool and the light's good. Um, but to show them as a pair, 
you know, maybe we're starting to get into the idea of, of, of storytelling a little bit more. And I mean, this is it's quite an easy example to put a portrait next to some flowers. Um, but it's nice, it works well. And if I go into the grid view again, what I can start to do is I can start to add more of these images together. So if I highlight another one from this set, and instead of pressing C this time, press N, which takes me into survey mode, we can bring up more than one image, okay? And this is how I'm looking at my work all the time, in groups, in pairings, in sets of images. And this helps me to establish a sense of how my work fits together within itself, how one image might fit into a bigger body of work. So, and I'm thinking, also story-wise story -wise and color-wise. Hmm. Or are you mostly just looking at the colors and story is like... Yeah, it's kind of together, you know, like how hmm. those things fit together. So, and obviously the story is, um, you know, it's more kind of like poetic or abstract. It's not that these yes, flowers, <laughs> the landscape and the portrait, they don't necessarily have anything to do with each other. Right. You know, one of them was taken in Morocco, two of them were taken in East London. But there's something happening when I put these three images together. And for me, like that's a, it's a really important part of photography because the more I go through this process, the more then when I go out and take pictures and, 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 and work on these projects, it's training my eye to think about what, you know, what goes well together, what helps to create a story or what helps to create a certain atmosphere within my work. So, <clears throat> like I said, you know, I can, you know, I, I have a certain approach to like, act, you know, saturating things or tweaking certain colors or whatever but really you know the only advice i can really give people in, in regards to that is just you have to experiment you know and i and it's always a, the the frustrating and harsh truth of it is that no one can tell you how to color grade your own photos you can learn the tools you know you can go through us you, you, know, you can you can follow a certain process but it's really about finding something that works for you and, and starts to create a certain aesthetic or a certain vibe within your photos. And so, Angus is saying in the chat, very much like setting up a magazine edit in Pixar color script in storytelling. And uh, Catherine is also saying, it's good to have the synergy and a narrative. Yes, absolutely. And just if you're wondering, just very quick, who I'm talking to, if not watching this on Behance, be.net slash Adobe Live. Come on over to Behance. That's be.net slash Adobe Live. Join the chat. You have about 10 minutes left, 12 minutes actually, to put in your questions and I will do my best to forward them to Max. Okay. Great. So, you know, this is continuing with the same idea with this survey mode by selecting multiple images and pressing M. And we can just grab a few more, you know, just to show like how this might work. As a set, so I'm just expanding the story. Let's just get rid of like this sidebar, like we know where we are. So this again, it's expanding the story, and it's like I can see that these images are are fitting together and they're communicating with one another in terms of in terms of um, color, but also in terms of a certain narrative or a certain story. And what's really useful with this particular view mode is I can just grab these images and just swap them around until I can kind of create a set that I think, okay, well, something's happening there uh, that I really like, you know? Um, and it's just starting to get into the idea of, of playing with sequencing and, and the idea of using images to tell stories. And this is just, yeah, it's, um, it seems kind of simple, but I'm sat at the, you know, when I'm not out taking pictures, I'm sat at the computer doing this. And, and just playing and just, and just experimenting. And I'm going back through my archive. I'm going back through other projects and I'm tweaking colors. Or I might find something where I'm like, that portrait of that guy is really great and it might work well in this short narrative, <clears throat> but the colors aren't right. So then I would adjust the color of that portrait to make it fit within the particular short narrative that I've created, okay? I mean, you can. it feels like you can play around for that like for days and weeks. Yeah, you get lost in it, you know, and that's, you get more and more projects, more and more images and, but it's, it's the fun of it, you know, like this is kind of the pleasure of it, you know, for me. And it's, I think that it's really useful to improve your ability when you go out and take pictures. It's like through doing this all the time, then when I go out, I'm, you know, my, my eye and uh, 
<clears throat> my approach is just naturally honed a little more, you know. And so perhaps, perhaps also during like these times where you can't really go to I don't know Morocco or go yeah. out and just take photos in the park of people having fun. Um, I guess this sort of can bring you out of your personal reality asylum and just have some fun time by watching or by looking at some of the photos and perhaps even discovering some ways they could interact that you haven't seen before. So do you exactly. do that? Just going back and matching yeah. different images together? Yeah, so I mean these you know, these five images that I've just pulled out of that that collection there, you know, the two of them are from the commission. Uh, that, that work together, the roses and uh, the woman in the yellow headscarf. And the shot in the middle is from a trip that I took to Morocco, which actually was a part of the commission as well. The portrait is from a really old street portrait that I took in 20, well, when I was first started doing them in 2017. And the one on the left is from a recent trip that I took that has nothing to do with the other ones, you know? But something is happening when I put all of those together. So this might be for a homepage for the for the website or it might be when planning out a portfolio because I have maybe I have a meeting with uh, a, a commercial or an editorial client or whatever and I want to show a new set of images so this might be the sequence in which I want to show the images you know I mean this is a really uh, important part of the like also photography just presenting your work I know just taking the photos editing that's a big part but if you can't really present it how do you how do you present your work I know you have a website And I think you have, Insta yes, you have an Instagram handle, but do you have yeah. like a custom website? How does that work? I, I have a printed portfolio. Right. And um, yeah, I, you know, I take that to people. Also, like I have a commercial agent as well. Shout out to Steph and hmm. the guys at Queen. Um, she, has a, she has a different version, a printed portfolio that has a different edit of work that is maybe more suitable for a commercial output. And she goes and shows people that as well, you know? Um, so yeah, it's really important, you know, thinking about how you're presenting it, thinking about the order in which you're presenting them and trying to create an atmosphere and a story within your work, I think is, you know, it's kind of crucial. Mm. It, just to kind of, um, just to like round up on, on this point, and I won't kind of go too deeply into this, um, but uh, uh, once you kind of like delve into this enough, You know, and you're, you're kind of getting into this and moving things around and you're like, okay, cool, well, this is interesting and, and fun. But it has its limitations, you know. Whereas the book module, okay, is where you can start to expand this. So, again, just in the interest of time, I'll be really quick on this. <laughs> right, but, we have about I, seven minutes. I, I really kind of implore uh, you guys to, to kind of get your head around the book module. Just like there's a million YouTube videos about how to do it. <laughs> So you can play around. But something that's so nice is, you know, I can add different pages to this book. And like I'm working with at the minute, uh, you know, I'm thinking about my pro this new project as a book. Um, I'm, this, is a, this is a great vehicle uh, to do this, you know. And I can, um, you know, I'm using the same images that we used for this example, uh, just for continuity. Um, but what I can do here is start to map these out into an imaginary book. But that's a really useful process because it's starting to, you know, I have a potential end goal. This could be a portfolio. It could be an actual physical publication, you know. So it's starting to now take my photos out of Lightroom and start to push me more into the real world of like printing something, creating something physical. And this is amazing because I can I can get a sense of the project as a whole, or I can press Command R and look at different spreads, and then I can flick through it and start to imagine how this might work in an actual portfolio or how it might work in a book. And obviously, something that I can do from here very easily is I can go across this film strip at the bottom, grab something else, experiment with pairings, and we have lots of different options in here for layouts. You know, I might want to go. Oh, wow. full, I might want to go full bleed with it. I mean, I tend not to, um, but maybe that's something I want to experiment with. Or if I think that looks weird, maybe I could do like a, a smaller crop with it, and we can start to experiment with how those images sit together um, in that sense as well. So we can get more sophisticated now. So it's like you know, we can we can put pairings in here. 
And I feel like the Lightroom book module just deserves some more love because I can see in that chat they're saying like, what, I didn't know that exists. Lightroom, is this the Lightroom? Yes, yes it is. Lightroom can do so much more and I think I can just, if you have the time, spend an afternoon discovering some of the modules you perhaps yeah. don't normally use, like the print I'm module. <laughs> Yeah, well, the print module is actually really amazing as well. And, you know, just to, you know, I can kind of like end on that very quick. Is if I press Command P and go into the print module, it's like I'm not thinking about this in terms of printing. But something that I can do is if I create a custom package here in the layout style, again, apologies for rushing through this, but That's right. all of the information is available online. You know, go to a page setup. And if I just create like an A4 landscape image something that i can do is i can imagine this now as a gallery wall not mm. as a printed page but i can be like okay well now i want to plan for i want to edit in sequence for a gallery okay so i can grab these same images and i can drop them in here and what i've got set up at the minute is in the cells it's giving it oh no sorry in image settings it's giving it a black border automatically that i can change and play around with that obviously just looks like a standard frame so I can drop these into here and I can be like, okay, well, how would these two images sit at this size on a gallery wall? And I can be really specific within the page setup and I can actually put in the dimensions of the imaginary or real gallery wall. And I can start to use it as a way to sketch out how I might present the images in the context of a gallery. Honestly, I think you're the first one actually doing that on Adobe Live and perhaps at all. I have never seen that before. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I'm not printing these out. I'm just using, you know, I'm trying to use the book module and the print module for what is useful for me. And like I said, the oh. most useful thing that Lightroom is great at is, is sequencing, reviewing, looking at images, creating pairs, creating sets, creating stories, you know, and the color grading, all of that, that will come in time. That will come yeah. through patience, you know? It's like there's a load of videos doing that. The most important thing to do is to think about how your images are sitting and communicating with one another. And that's what really starts to hone your eye and, and, and hone your skills as a photographer. And for me, like, that's really, um, you know, that's really uh, the, the pleasure of it, you know? And obviously, like, in here, I can... You know, I can go, okay, well, we're going to do it all the time. Yeah, purple, perfect. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Just like this. If you, if you want to go crazy or whatever, maybe you've got, maybe your work is a little different to mine and maybe it's an illustration or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you want to go for these kind of bright frames or maybe you want to imagine them as like a light oak frame, you know, like this or whatever. But I tend to just stick it to black as um, quite often I use black frames. So. Oh. so, yeah, so between the print module, the book module, and then just going into the grid view and using survey mode of just grabbing stuff and pressing N, we're really starting to think about how our images are working like together, you know, and working, working as a story. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this is basically all the time we have for today. It was really fantastic that just watching your work and seeing a bit of your workflow peeking inside your mind to see what you're thinking while you're doing that. And that chat is really amazed. They're saying, like, can, can you come back and go through this in more detail, please? Well, if you're up for it, I would love to have you back on Adobe Live. Perhaps we can take a bit more time than just going into the detail and perhaps even taking a look at your color workflow, because you said you do some editing in Lightroom. So if you're down mm -hmm. for that, I would absolutely would love to have you back. And I'm yeah. sure the chat would agree. Just one more thing. Let's have a look what the hovering art directors has to say about this. Make it less stocky. Okay. Well, like fantastic. Right. <laughs> I was Sorry, hoping I for a good comment. To, um, end, end on a Q&A <clears throat> and we were a bit tight for time, but like if anyone wants to send me oh, yeah. a message on, on, on Instagram, uh, then feel free to do that. And I'm happy to, I'm happy to take the time to respond and, and answer any questions that I can. So. Yep. The name is right below. You, like, right, no, there. Ah. <laughs> there. <Yeah. laughs> yes, there it is. Contact Max on Instagram, and I'm sure he will have the time and just say a few words to you. All right. Well, then, thank you so much for watching, everybody 
in the chat who did this. And of course, if you're watching the replay, thanks for watching the replay. And, oh, okay, one, one last thing. I think I have to just reveal that for a second. You notice that I said perhaps some weird words, including reality asylum. And um, the chat did notice that we do have a word game we like to play. It's called the word of the day. And sometimes we pick a word before the stream and we have to sneak it in. So the word of the day was reality that. asylum. Oh. I didn't tell you about this before. Wow. <laughs> I know. We did a good job, man. You snuck it in well. We had all sorts of different words. We had cardboard mythology, webbit season, yellow submarine, flugelhorn, of course. And uh, so, yes, chat. If you ever notice somebody like Tony saying anything weird, point it out. That's a point for you. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for joining us, Max. It was a pleasure having you here and just listening to your process. And I'm sure everybody would love to have you back at some point, hopefully soon. Yeah. If you have the time, just let us know. And everybody in chat, thanks so much. Have a wonderful rest of your week because... Oh, schedule. Yes. Can we take a look at that? Yes, we can. Because tomorrow, special stream. Tomorrow, Thursday and Friday, we will start the uh, Portfolio Masterclass. Mm, three days. And I think there's even a prize involved at the end. Perhaps one year of Creative Cloud. Who knows? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, thank you, Max. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful week. Enjoy the rest of your day and see you soon. Bye. Great. Thank you, guys. See you later.